Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, I guess uh, you might have figured out by now that uh, from the introduction that we went over a thousand subscribers. So I do want to thank all of you that have subscribed to the channel and um, appreciate that. Got us up over a thousand. And so going into the new year, we can concentrate on producing more videos and getting a lot of subject material out there that you want to see. So keep coming back for more videos on a regular basis. Today I want to start a couple of videos on speakers. If you pick the right one, you can get great sound from that new sound decoder that you've got. Pick the wrong one, and it'll be a dud. So stick around, and we'll take a look at how to choose the best one for your situation, and how to get the best sound out. So what I have here for you is a selection of different type of speakers to give you an idea of what is available out there on the market and uh, for your uh, specific installations. Now probably the most popular or most common one in use is this one inch round uh, speaker. These have been available for 25 plus years for sound installations, um, but uh, uh, the quality of the speakers have, has increased greatly during that time. Um, this particular one is a TCS uh, speaker. It's 28 millimeters in diameter, 1.1 inches, and uh, it comes with this, you can get this enclosure for it. You can see it's a, uh, a, a plastic enclosure. It has two holes here on the, the back of it for running wires through so that you can either mount it with the cones facing out or you can mount it with the cone facing inward. I kind of like doing it this way because it does protect the cone uh, during the installation process and, and just, you know, from rubbing wires against it, things of that nature. Now you'll note here that on the side of the uh, speaker we have two little silver dots. These are the uh, two solder points for the wires coming from your sound decoder. So that's all they are. They are a couple of uh, drops of solder. So it's already pre-tinned for you. And you just tin your wires and hit them right there and you're done. Um, it's always a good idea when you install a speaker in an enclosure like this to use some sort of adhesive to go on the back and seal it into the uh, enclosure. Uh, that for one thing, keeps it from falling out in case you mount it upside down. But it also seals the uh, speaker as well. So you do want to get these sealed up tightly. Now one thing that you should remember is there is a, a little rim here and um, you can purchase, uh, Soundtrack sells little uh, gaskets that go on these rims to seal them in. Or you can just use a little bit of super glue on the uh, rim itself, and then pop it into place, and you've got a good airtight seal, hopefully, uh, that will allow the sound uh, from only one side of the speaker to be uh, to be emitted. And I'll uh, I'll talk more about that in the next video about why that is so important. So that's pretty straightforward. And this nice little enclosure, these are available from TCS uh, to go with Wow Sound decoders in particular, but decoders in general. Okay, another very popular uh, type are these oval-shaped uh, speakers. And you can see uh, they're very similar here. These are basically 8 ohm, 1 watt uh, speakers. And they have two solder dots here on the back for attaching the wires here. And one thing I commonly will do with a lot of my speaker installations is attach a short length of wires to each pad and then add a connector here so that I can disconnect the uh, speaker if I need to. One reason that these are so popular is that, um, or have been so popular anyway in the past, is that they are narrow enough so they fit in the hood of most uh, diesel units. Uh, so they, they, they're great for that. You can just uh, Use a piece of double foam, double sided foam tape and stick it to the inside there of the uh, shell and it's perfect fit for it. Now, 
Another type of these oblong oval type speakers are these uh, bass reflex speakers. If you note right here, there is an oval cutout right here in the um, face of the speaker enclosure. And that design, the way that this is designed internally, it enhances the, uh, the uh, low frequency output, the bass output. So these are great for, you know, steam locomotive installations. They'll fit inside of a tender quite nicely. Um, they're not going to fit in most uh, HO diesel units unless you've got uh, a dummy unit that you want to uh, install it in, maybe. But they're designed specifically to put out uh, a much higher bass volume, okay? And so they're great for that. These here are a neat design. I got most of these, I think, from Railmaster Hobbies. Um, they have sort of a rubber-like uh, diaphragm here, and then a metal uh, cone. I think that's aluminum cone here in the center. And they are uh, they're designed specifically, like the other uh, bass reflex speakers, to enhance the bass volume, okay, the bass output. This particular one is the 28 millimeter QSI uh, uh, speaker, and it uh, it's rated at 8 ohms and 2 watts. And I'll get into that in the next video as to what's important about the wattages. And you can see here there's uh, contacts for soldering the wires on either side here. And these can be installed this way or this way. Okay. And they come in various sizes. That's a, a one inch roughly, 28 millimeter, 28 millimeter round. And this one I think is about uh, somewhere between half and three quarters of an inch. So you can get these for a number of different types of installations. And they work great in steam locomotives. Because of that base, if you put in a uh, decoder and it has one of those uh, steamboat type whistles, Oh man, the sound out of this is just great. It gives that low bass sound that is so nice on uh, a steam locomotive. And somewhere on the, on the channel, I have videos where I showed and, and gave examples of how these uh, sounded with a typical round uh, speaker and one of these bass reflex speakers. So take a look at that. I'll see if I can add a, uh, a link to it uh, directly here. Okay, let me put these out of the way. So, like I said, these will fit in most HO uh, steam locomotive tenders, and you can probably get them into uh, larger uh, O scale or possibly S scale and larger scale uh, diesels. Um, the next thing I want to talk about then is something that has really taken over in the hobby, uh, or at least from my standpoint, in the last three or four years. And that's these sugar cube speakers. And here's one. This one here is only about 11 millimeters long. So it's very small. It's a, a TCS speaker. It's rated at 8 ohms and I think about 0.8 watts. So it's a fairly low wattage. But for their size, they can move an amazing amount of air and uh, produce a, an amazing volume. And they also uh, put out very good uh, low frequency volume. So they're good for steam locomotives. Um, this particular one is a, a set of TCS one. Um, and this is an enclosure, TCS one, the same one, installed in an enclosure that uh, TCS sells just for use with this particular um, speaker. Okay. Another speaker design, or another um, enclosure design, you note that on these, the TCS speakers, they have the speaker face pointing outward instead of inward. Whereas on the uh, uh, this one from uh, Tony's Trains, and also uh, those from uh, um, a streamlined back shop, they're set up so that they face inward. And I've seen post on various forums and, and websites about uh, these, and some people say that this produces the best volume, whereas TCS says they've tested them and that they have found these to produce excellent volume and frequency. On this particular design, the speaker sits down inside on a little shelf, so it can be glued into place, 
and it's fairly stable. It stays in there very well, and it's a good tight seal. Uh, I, however, do usually put a little bit of gel super glue around the edge of that little ledge inside before I pop the speaker in. And that gives it a good airtight seal. And I'll talk more, you know, airtight seals are very important when it comes to speakers. And I'll, talk, I'll tell you why in the next video. Okay, so here's one that I've already attached uh, two wires to it in preparation for installation in a, uh, in a locomotive. So they, they'll grow, these things will go into a lot of locomotives. I now uh, regularly attempt installations in locomotives that I previously never would have attempted to install a sound decoder in, simply because these things will fit just about anywhere. Now, as far as enclosures go, uh, I showed you this one here. It's a fairly small enclosure as far as thickness goes. And the theory behind enclosures is that the enclosure should be uh, as deep and wide, I guess, as the speaker is wide, okay? So for a one inch speaker, you should have one inch by one inch on each side, and it should be a full inch deep. Well, obviously, this is not an inch deep. It's maybe a half inch deep. So to get the best volume out, it would be better to have a deeper enclosure. But unfortunately, one of the realities is they also have to fit inside of our locomotives. And this one um, is a fairly good compromise of that, and, and we do have to make compromises. Um, another compromise is this one from TCS. So you can put the uh, speaker in there, and it will, again, fit in a lot of places, and it produces excellent quality sound. So it's, again, trade-offs are part of this game. Um, another type of enclosure uh, that Soundtrack sells are these plastic ones. These are nice. They're stackable. They have a base and a top and, uh, in all cases, and they're great. They, you just cut them out, put them together, you can glue them together, you can make them deeper if you want by stacking them one on top of the other. So you can customize the enclosure to fit the installation. And uh, these that I have from Tony's Trains, he also sells them uh, for these uh, small sugar cube speakers with stackable components as well. So you can, you can uh, increase the depth if you have room for it. Finally, I want to show you some speakers, enclosures that are available for sugar cube speakers from um, Brian Vianco at Streamline Backshop. And uh, this is a basic one. This is, I think, an 11 by 15 uh, uh, sugar cube speaker. And this particular design is uh, for HO locomotives, and it's designed, you can see it has a nice curve on the top here. Uh, that enclosure is designed to be glued inside the roof of the cab of a locomotive, either steam or diesel. And then, you know, you, you're going to produce sound uh, out from the uh, face here going into the cab. So it's a great way to get sound into installations that you might never have been able to do because you can get that speaker up into the cab. And it's great for that. You know, it works great. Now, other options. Um, if you have even more room, here's a double one with room for two speakers. You can move twice as much sound, get twice as much volume uh, out of that installation. He also has one where you can have them, you know, two side by side, back to back like this. And it's a little bit deeper. Uh, so if you have room, you could use that one. Um, if you have room for a rectangular one, he has this one that's deep, and you can put two speakers in it. The same type of design, but with about half the thickness. So lots of different options from Streamline Backshop for, for use with these. And the basic uh, approach is you just put a bead of super glue around the edge and drop that speaker right down on it, and you're done. I usually will go back and run a bead of super glue with a toothpick around the outer edges again, just to make sure I have that really good seal. But those are, those are really neat options for installing in locomotives where the cab roof is about the only place that's available. Okay, so 
that's an idea of the type of speakers that are available for you and how you can uh, use them in different installations, whether it be inside, you know, a cab roof or be in a tender of a steam locomotive and something like this, you know, just about any place that you could uh, uh, find a, a few square millimeters to pop it in there. So in the next video, as I've said, we'll talk a little bit more about the theory behind uh, speakers, how they operate, and that'll give you a little bit more background uh, for deciding on which one of these that you might want to try for your next DCC uh, sound installation. In the video that I'll post um, on Thursday of this week, I'm going to take a look at basically how speakers work, and that affects the type that you choose for any installation, also the type of enclosures that you need to get for them, and uh, finally and most importantly, how to wire them so that you get the best sound out of a sound installation. So come on back on Thursday and take a look at the next video.